Hello my friends and a very warm welcome back to my painting channel and in this video we are going to be painting these crazy horrible horrific eight-legged little freaks we're going to be painting the spiders from the resident evil 2 board game these are the wolf spiders that come in the survival horror expansion box and there's two of them together so we're going to paint the uh the sort of the one that's rearing up on its back legs and we're going to make this guy look exactly like we do uh they, they do in the video game and we're going to make this look really really horrific um so yes beware if you're afraid of spiders because this is going to be a bit of a uh, a grim one so yeah looking forward to this one so what we're going to do is without further ado we're just going to make a straight start on this model and we're going to use a uh, first layer of uh, light earth from ak interactive now if you don't have these paints it doesn't matter there are always alternatives now this particular color is very very similar to citadel's flayed one flesh so what we're doing is instead of painting this like a cream or like a khaki this is almost like a mixture of both so it's kind of like a, a, a half and half of cream and khaki together uh, the AK interactive the reason why I use that is just because it dries down to a nice matte finish and it covers the model nice and evenly but as I said if you have the flayed one flesh uh, you can use that one and it will do equally the same job it will be just as nice so pretty much that's all I'm going to do is just cover all of the model with this color just sort of uh, making sure that the whole miniature is covered in this sort of creamy sort of khaki color um, and then we're going to start to build and work out the pattern from there obviously going to try to take my time to make sure that the paint gets into all of those cracks especially around the underneath from there then I'm going to move into one of my favorite colors which is the Vallejo Dark Rust. Again if you don't have Dark Rust um, and you use a Citadel you could use Dryad Bark and that would give you a very very similar if not the exact same results. It's a very similar sort of dark dark brown. Uh, once we've got that brown we're going to just water this down slightly so that it moves off the brush onto the miniature in a nice even fashion and then what we're going to do is we're just going to start to mark out all of the patterns now the first pattern that we're going to mark is just across the back area here and with the back area it has these sort of um uh, kind of big long sort of stripes down the back so we're just going to try to mark out where these stripes are um so the way we're going to do this is to kind of create them like a um, like a crescent shape. So as you can see, they're not straight. They're kind of curving around the back area. They're kind of curving around this bulb on the back of the, the spider, just like so. Uh, we're going to paint these up. You can paint them as thick or as thin as you like. You can make them as thick or as thin as you like. I made one quite thick and one quite thin on the two models that I painted. And I'll be honest, I personally prefer the one that is quite thick. I think it has a lot more character and it makes it look a lot more uh, chunky and a lot more sort of like uh, aggressive as a spider. I think the thicker lines do sort of stand out a lot, lot better. Um, but that is purely personal choice. I mean, you can make them a little bit thinner if you'd prefer. Uh, that is completely up to you and as you can see just painting these sort of crescents these sort of curves around here what I'm going to do with the brown as well I'm just going to cover the underneath of the spider with that brown as well and as I said this is all just planning because we're going to cover this in a wash a little bit later and this is going to tie all of those colors together and um, but you're just kind of planning this sort of shape and this pattern out here as you can see already on the back of the spider this is already looking great now one of the longest processes to do, and one of the hardest processes I found with this, was trying to plan where all of the little bands and stripes and things are across the legs. So hopefully by showing you this, I'll be able to talk you through this nice and quickly and easily. So first things first, I'm gonna start by using the brown down in the deepest areas of the legs. So as you can see, I'm getting right down towards the body with the legs. Then the next stripe is just up by the knee, and the next one is just past the knee. Now the reason for that is we're going to add some orange bits just around two of the knees. So we're going to use these two stripes as a um, an area where the orange stripe is going to be. The next one will be just underneath the next knee. And then the, 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 the sort of fourth or fifth stripe here you can see is just going to be before the next knee and another one just after. And again that's creating these areas for this orange to go. And um, we're going to do this across all of the legs. I probably won't show me doing it across all of the legs. But as you can see, I'm just kind of marking out and planning on this particular spider how we're going to work this out. So as I say, just around that knee area here. And then just under the knee as well will be the next area. And that will give us that area of that orange. There we go, just like so. 
And doing this and being as nice and careful as possible, you, you don't need to be perfect with this. Uh, because the spider is sort of supposed to be quite hairy or, or quite sort of um, textured. These lines don't have to be perfectly uh, in shape, they don't have to be perfectly round, they don't have to be circlets and ringlets that look exact and perfect and precise. You can actually uh, use the uh, stippling motion and technique if you wanted to, uh, to create this because this is going to give that illusion of fur, that illusion of texture as well. Uh, so don't worry too much about getting all of these ringlets and circles perfect and blending them perfectly uh, because at the end of the day this spider is organic so nothing is going to look exact, precise and perfect. Things are going to have their own little character, their own little detail and their own little intricacies and differences as well. So don't worry too much about that. Using that brown as well, I'm going to create a circle. I'm going to paint just around the face and the eyes and then I'm going to create a circle just in the middle of the body, uh, just like so. And as you can see then on the legs on the left hand side, you can see where I've just sort of planned out these brown uh, sort of ringlets and circles just around the legs. And just giving you an idea now on the right hand side of doing the same thing. So as I said, putting that dark brown just down into the, the, the sort of furthermost recessed areas, just down into the area around the body. And then of course, the ringlets just around the knee here. So leaving an area on the knee for that orange tone to go as well. So you can see it's quite a long process or it's a, a time consuming process just trying to be careful making these sort of patterns but to be honest this is the only real sort of time consuming part of the model the model itself is very easy it's very quick it's very straightforward once you've got this pattern in place the rest will come together very 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 quickly so spend a little bit of time getting this pattern in this area uh, sort of to the to your liking to the area and to the stage that you're happy with uh, because once we get past this bit it's going to move very very quickly and the spider is just going to kind of uh, become quite quickly exactly as you, you expect it to. So it's going to be nice and fast, nice and fluid, nice and straightforward. And again, you can see me just planning out that knee just on this back leg here, just showing you, there we go, there's a knee area just here because that's where we're going to place our oranges just on a few of the knees. Now the orange doesn't need to sit on every knee, it will sit on just two of the knees and a little bit of the body and that's going to create a really cool way of breaking up these two main colours. Now the other thing I wanted to show you with the brown, on the one that's rearing its uh, back legs or its front legs up, it's rearing, rearing up its, its teeth and claws, um, you can see I'm using the brown then as well to do the same thing underneath. So what I'm doing here is just painting a circle of brown in the middle and then I'm just creating a, a sort of ringlet of brown across those inner legs as well so that again the underneath ties into the top so that we kind of got that uniform pattern right the way through. And this is going to look really, really, really cool when it's done. This is going to be um, a really, really interesting and unique sort of pattern that's really going to make this spider stand out. It's going to Make it look like you've spent hours and hours and hours planning this out and a lot of time painting it when in truth we haven't it's quite simple and you'll see that as we build this up so yeah like i say just making sure that we spend a bit of time on those circles and on those rings and on the pattern because that's where we are looking so from there i'm going to use a scale 75 vulcan orange again if you don't have this color you can use something like the orange brown from vallejo uh, that's equally as good that'll do a similar sort of job the only reason i'm using this vulcan brown is because it has this really cool sort of um brown orange kind of tone to it um, and it dries down to a really nice um, sort of glow it has this really nice sort of standing out uh, that the orange really stands out on this color which makes uh, the spider really pop it makes him really really stand out and that's all we're going to do with this as you can see is we're going to paint those two knees those two areas that i mentioned that we were purposefully picking out on the legs to create these sort of knee areas that we can have this really nice bright vibrant orange as a warning so this spider is warning you um, i'm poisonous i'm deadly come near me and i'm going to eat you you know so so we're just painting these these bright orange knees because this is the the, the character this is how the spider is really going to stand out and you can see how quickly just by adding a few blobs on those knees how quickly the spider starts to take shape and starts to look like the spiders from the video game we're going to do the same thing just on the body so we're going around the outside of the body just uh, where we painted the round area in the center of that dark dark brown we're just going to use this sort of orangey brown tone just around the edge of that and we're just going to blend that color by using a little stippling uh, just to blend that orange and brown together like so and you can really see how much this spider is starting to really really take shape and stand out see it doesn't take 
ages it doesn't take loads and loads of prep work and planning it's not a difficult painting uh, it's not something you need to be overly precious and precise about because it's an organic creature so we can have little intricacies like i say and you can afford to make mistakes and it still will look great so this is a really really cool way of painting these spiders it's really cool being able to bring these sort of spiders together and bring them to life as well it's actually awesome being able to paint them like the original video game uh, because the, the 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 textures the colors the tones really do make these look completely unique and different from any other kind of spider that you'd normally paint in like your fantasy miniatures and your fantasy games they really really do stand out they look amazing or they look horrific if you don't like spiders if you've uh, got sort of a phobia of spiders this is probably your worst nightmare right now um but yeah it's such a simple simple thing to do and it's really cool being able to paint them like the originals from there, I'm just using a little bit of German grey. So this is a dark blue grey. So if you've got sort of a dark blue grey or sort of a black sort of tone, and I'm just going to paint the fangs on the spider with this uh, colour. Again, just to separate the browns and the brown tones and the earthy tones just into a little bit of a grey sort of colour and just sort of pick out that area of, of the, the fangs. What I'm also going to do is just using the very tip of my brush, I'm just going to make a little spot on each one of the eyes just to kind of again break up that brown sort of tone that that earthy color around the face just so that it gives us a little bit of something else to look at and something to notice on the miniature as well so it's nice and simple nice and easy uh, but it looks good as well nice and pleasing to the eye so yeah, like I say, it's really cool being able to paint these things very similarly to uh, the video game. Um, I had a lot of fun working out these colours and tones as well. And I noticed in the comments when I posted the picture that there's a lot of people that were interested in this one. So I really hope the video does it justice. From there, I'm going to use a wash and I'm going to use a strong tone. But what I've done with the strong tone is I've added a very, very small amount of water to it just to allow the strong tone to move and be manipulated onto the model uh, nice and evenly. And that way then it's not going to uh, tone down the color of our model too much. So it's going to sit in those recess points and in those furry bits on the knees, the orange parts and things like that, but without taking away that bright, vibrant orange color, without taking away that, that sort of lovely color and tone that makes this model uh, so unique and that's all I'm going to do is just cover the entire miniature with this wash now because this is watered down we're not going to need to boost this up too much because it's not going to bring our colors down too much um, which means uh, that this is one of the fun final stages this is one of the easiest models to paint um, although it looks really complicated and that is the beauty of this model is you can look at this on the tabletop or on the, the on the game board or when you take photos to to show your friends and they'll really think that you've worked hard and spent ages painting this but in truth it's not really that difficult and that's the beauty of it is it looks amazing but it's quite quick and simple as well from there that's all i'm going to do is just use uh just one of the final stages now just using a pallage witch flesh just to paint these two tiny little fangs that he's got in his mouth um and i'm just going to pick these out so that again you get a nice little vibrant bright sort of tone just breaking up all of that darkness and give you something uh to draw your eyes to and i'm also going to do the same thing on its little web spinners just on the back here you don't have to do the web spinners if you want to keep those in that sort of um light earth sort of uh, earthy sort of tones uh, you're more than welcome to do so like i always say they're your money they are your miniatures you can paint them however you like um, i'm just here to give you ideas and a guide and there you go all in all it was as simple as that and these spiders look well, I want to say great, but they also look horrible. They look horrific. They look exactly like they should. They look scary, they look creepy, and they look exactly like the video game. These are a great addition to our Resident Evil 2 board game box set. They look fantastic, and they're going to be great in the board game as well. So, yeah, all in all, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Um, I really hope that uh, it's given you something different to, to paint and something different to try. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Thank you for positivity. Thank you. Uh, for, for everything you do all of the additions and and the things you've done for my channel i can't thank you all enough um so yeah you take care my friends and i will see you guys on the next one